on the Indian Super League Instagram handle once again. Thank you so much for tuning in to another special edition of Let's Football Live. Uh, I'll just wait for you guys uh, to tune in. As always, we have another special guest uh, lined up for you. Now, this whole series started with a gentleman with long hair and a beard, a guy who goes by the name of Sandesh Jingan, our Minister of Defence. In the second episode, uh, we had uh, an Aussie with long hair and a, and a bit of beard as well, uh, Eric Partilu. Uh, and we have another special Aussie uh, joining us today. Let me welcome all of you. Uh, Mukherjee, Rufus Appus, hello. Knowing us, Wheel Hacker, nice name by the way. Uh, tonight Gamer, thanks for tuning in guys. Uh, it's been a pleasure you know, bringing this to you as well. And like I said, today's special guest uh, is an Aussie. He's actually the seventh Australian to play in the history of the Hero Indian Super League. He scored seven goals in the season 2019-20 while playing for ATK. And the interesting thing is, every time he scored, ATK Football Club won the game. Of course, they went on to be champions uh, for the third time uh, as well. He's somebody whose relationship with Roy Krishna has been much talked about right from pre-season all the way to lifting that trophy at the Fotoda. Let me waste no further time in welcoming, all the way from Australia, somebody we've come to know as the man who scored the thousandth goal in the Hero Indian Super League, Dave Williams. So I'm going to add him on. Stay with me. Bear with me. Even Rafael Nadal was struggling with Instagram yesterday, so I'm sure you... And I'm going to get Williams on here and David Williams should be with us in... Five, four, three, two. Oh, bang on. There you go. Hello, sir. How are you? Nice to be here. Well, well good to have you. It's becoming a bit of a tradition now. Aussies uh, with long hair. Also, we started the, started the series with Sunday Jingen with long hair. And uh, as the ISL Twitter handle rightly said, you've let your hair down. How have you been spending lockdown, David? We've painted inside and out and built a fence, painted a fence. We've um, got everything in, all the furniture, so we've been very busy. We laid um, the turf for the lawn and done everything like that, so we're keeping uh, very busy. So between the grocery store and um, Bunnings Warehouse, which is the hardware store, then um, we don't get out much. <laughs> right, now I'll jump straight to it. Now, there was a, there was a question that come, came from Mohua Bandopadhyay. Uh, who said, which is your first football team you played uh, played for? And there was also a question from the stadium YT was, how did you enter football, David? Just talk us through your journey a little bit because that took you to the Danish league as well. And, uh, you know, of course, to India after playing, you know, your time in the A-League. Clubs in Brisbane, where I'm from. Um, so my first club there was actually um, just called North. A couple of school friends, but... And then I went to a few other junior clubs around uh, the area. Um, but then I was at uh, a club for a longer Memories from there, I guess, because I was a little bit older as well. Uh, professional club was Queensland uh, uh, Raw, but then um, it's now called Brisbane. I got into football because my oldest brother used to play, so I was off to the side kicking the ball and... Um, you know, watching people, copying people. Kept on doing it. Yeah, fantastic. I can see Javi Hernandez is logged on as well and he gives you a nice little wave. So maybe you can, you can wave uh, back to him. I'm sure there'll be a lot of, uh, you know, ATK <laughs> fans. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, what a hero, right? In the, in the hero ISL final, not in the least, to, to, score, to score the goals that he did. What a fantastic achievement that was. And that's, that's something that we'd, I'd love to talk to you about as well, the final, and even before that, the semi-final. But even before that comes the story, uh, David, of you coming to India. Uh, how did that happen? How did, uh, how did the whole Hero Indian Super League thing with ATK work out for you? After having such a successful season in the A-League? Just a couple of conversations, and um, there were a few agents who were there sniffing around, but uh, I left it in... Um, in the hands of my real um, agent. Um, and, you know, I think they were interested also in um, a lot of players. Saw me as a, a pretty good target to get. I, was, I wasn't I was so old. Come and on the decline of their careers. Um, yeah. I wasn't looking for something different at the time. We really enjoyed our time in Wellington League and, a beautiful place over there in New Zealand, um, but it just didn't work out 
there and and India um, was yeah somewhere different. I've played in a few countries now, and it's nice to travel. It's nice to experience the world and the opportunity to play in different countries and experience different cultures. Do that, so that's a big part of it as well. Because there's going to be a time where we're going to be have to have to be based somewhere, and um, we'll just be still for quite a few years. I'm just I'm just struggling with the audio a little bit. Uh, I'm just struggling with the audio, David. Sorry. Uh, I'm just I'm just wondering if it's, if it's if it's the connection over there. I've just got a few messages as well from people saying just struggling with the uh, with David's audio uh, a little bit. So if you if you just bear with me one second. Um, no, but. I mean, better? If you if you can, yeah, it's better. It usually settles down in a couple of minutes. I think it, it's. Uh, yeah, there I think it go. should be fine now. I think it should be. I think it should be okay. fine. There's just a bit of a lag. It's just a bit of a lag when when I'm when I'm asked you the question and sometime in the middle of the answer. But that's okay. We'll we will no, deal no, with no. it. If I, if I can't hear you, I'll I'll ask you to just I'll ask you to just repeat the journey. I'm sure you, there are so many fond memories. You don't mind repeating some of them. <laughs> No problem. Yeah, it could be it could be the Bluetooth as well. Sometimes the Bluetooth uh, you know comes in the way. So uh, I need a new let's see. Let's let's try. Let. <laughs> All right. Otherwise, I'm going to okay. try and I'm going to try and uh, try and reconnect uh, later on. But of course, that that was the that was the move to India. But I remember you giving us an in, uh, an interview, and this was I think to the Indian Super League guys uh, just after the game, which said. Uh, that you were missing your family not being around at at the Fatoda. Of course, it was a closed door event, but families were still there. Uh, and you said this is the first time that you had won something big. Am I am I right in saying that when you yeah. won the ISL trophy? Yep. Yes, it was very surreal. And um, my wife and my youngest were just about to be on their way over uh, to India, up to Goa. Um, but yeah, you know, a few things fell through, and we got a few warnings um, about. India going into lockdown or not letting people into the country and whatnot. So um, it worked out uh, eventually to be the best um, that they stayed back in Townsville. Well, very disappointing, but um, that's yeah. just the way it is. And we'll have to make another final next year and they can come to that. Look, it wasn't bad at all. I remember meeting you in pre-season, David, and uh, we were doing these uh, strikers drills with you and Roy Krishna. And you said, when are you going to be... Sh when when are you going to show this video clip out of me giving the master class for a striker? I said the moment you start scoring in the ISL, we're going to push these out on uh, you know on on the network. And you said, what if I don't get any goals? Well, I, I can tell you, you didn't just score. Every time you scored for ATK, ATK, every time you scored and assisted for ATK, ATK were unbeaten. So that's quite a record to to go by. That's nice, nice to be involved in that. But yeah, what I can do for my team, so it's all good. <laughs> and of course, a lot of talk is about uh, you know Roy Krishna and you know uh, all of that. But I'll come to that later because I'll, I'll, I'd want the fans to also get to know from you what that feeling in the dressing room was like because you know there are, there are lots of visuals that have come out in the unfiltered version of that final where there's a lot of bonding in the dressing room, David, and not just between you and the Indian players, also with you and the staff. What was that oh, relationship yeah. like? Tell tell us a little bit about it. Yeah, the staff are, are great. They give everything um, to the team. Um, they're, they're there before us, they leave after us um, and, you know, they, they've just got such a big heart for the club, uh, even though it's a young club. Um, so as players, um, especially I think with the way that Roy and I have been brought up, we appreciate everyone around us from the kit man to, you know, the bus driver saying hello when we leave the bus or something like that. So, I mean, everyone does their part to... Um, give us a good training park, to give us good clothes, clean clothes, to, um, you know, to, to be happy. And, and footballers are very picky and complain a lot. Um, and there's a lot of people in the background who do a lot for the, uh, for the players and don't get recognised. But, um, you know, everyone, everyone there has a laugh together and everyone gets on with each other. So it's, um, it's a, you know, a pleasure to be around. And um, as you can see on a lot of their, the staff face, uh, their faces that, um, you know, they, they really enjoyed that. So. 
Yeah, certainly did, and we enjoyed watching it as well. Uh, uh, by the way, let me tell you, the audio has settled down now, so we're we're, we're oh, doing perfect. fine. Good. Yeah. Uh, I'll, 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 I'll blame my, it on the uh, my uh, comment thing. Though. I've got the keyboard there. I can't get rid of it. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry about it. We 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 want as many comments as possible, including one that came, which is who's the best dancer in that dressing room in ATK. Somebody asked that question. Uh in for me, in my opinion, would be Mundy because. The Spanish background, and um, I, you know, I was with him at Wellington as well. He danced a lot more in in Wellington than he um, than he did in uh, Kolkata, but um, you know, he he's quite a good dancer. I think a lot of the Indian boys would say Joby. Um, yeah, Joby Justin is a, a very good dancer. Um, yeah, I think my opinion doesn't really matter. <laughs> oh, it so does. Trust me, Kerala fans. Kerala fans would love to hear Joby Justin's name in any capacity, whether he's an yeah. ATK player or not. <laughs> yeah, well, for him, it's unfortunate. You know, we had a good attack. We had a good line-up. And, um, you know, it's just unfortunate the way that the league set up that a lot of Indian strikers don't get the opportunity. So, hopefully, with a few rule changes in the future, it might, um, you know, we might see some of these good young players. Because they all have talent and they work hard. But, they, you know, it comes down to, um, you know, those, those 90 minutes on the weekend or yeah. not the weekend because we play midweeks as well, but um, on game day. Yeah. Somebody's also asked about the best, the best singer in that uh, dressing room. I've got, I've got a nice little rapid fire round for you waiting as well, which I'm sure Javi Hernandez would like to listen to. And I believe Paul Meesfield is listening to this as well. So oh, yeah. I'm sure he'd love a few, few, few answers. And I, I, I was also been, I've, I've also been in touch with Ascalides who had a few questions for you. So we'll come to that in a moment. No problem. Yeah. Well, the best singer. The best singer, um, probably Prabia. <laughs> he's is the most it? Wow. confident. He's probably the most confident, I think, as well. So um, he's got big lungs on him. So you've seen his reactions from um, clearances or the way the games are going that he he shouts a lot. But um, his singing's up there too. He's he's quite good. Fantastic. I thought he'd be the best dancer, and somebody else would be the best singer. But uh, you know, speaking of Prabir. And also Sumit Rathi, who eventually won the uh, ISL Emerging Player uh, for you know season 2019-20. What did you observe about them, and you know what was their work ethic like, which made them such a success story as Indian players this season, David? Since you watched them so closely. Yeah, well, without football kind of having to do anything, both those players just work hard at training. Um, yeah. You know, in the gym, in in the games, they just work hard and. A uh, few coaches I've heard is, you know, you don't need talent to work hard. Um, so I've seen also a lot, a lot of times in Australia, players who work the hardest generally get their opportunities rather than talented players who, you know, take it for granted a little bit. But these two players, you know, you know, work their socks off and they just run and run and just fight for everything. And I think that showed that playing in a good team as well, that's helped them. Um, being more comfortable. Um, Summit was playing next to Argus for a little bit as well, um, which probably helped him a lot. I think if, um, you know, he started with someone else next to him on the inside, then it might have been a bit more difficult. But I think Argus um, guided him quite a lot, spoke to him quite a lot. And both of them, yeah. um, you know, take constructive criticism very well. They listen and try to put into practice you know, mistakes that they've made. And Prabir is, you know, he doesn't need to be talked up. He um, he just works hard. He runs all game. He's got so much passion. And I think that also helps the talent that he's got to um, push him into the next level. So um, I feel like he could play overseas and go even further outside India as long as he had the, the right coach in the, in the right setup. But um, both of them, are, I think, definitely deserve to be um, in and around that national team. I think your missus on is online as well, and she just uh, she just had a message for you. You might you might have missed that. You might have missed that along oh, the way. I'm not reading the comments, but, uh, yeah. but, but you know, speaking of the missus, David, uh, you know, there's Roy Krishna and there's David Williams, and both are often mentioned in the same sentence. I, I must have lost count a number of times. I must have mentioned you guys in the in the course of the season. The fans keep talking about all of you. Do the respective misses have a problem with the kind of relationship you've had over the years? Because uh, it's I've never seen two people mention in, in the same breath as often as David Williams and Roy Krishna. Look, uh, I think they don't have a problem with it. I think um, they they don't mind that we spend time together and it gets us, um, you know, separation for that little bit. So, 
if we're around um, everyone all the time, then um, you get sick of each other. So um, we need our time apart, but, um, you know, we, we do quite well um, together as well. But, no, they're, they're all good with it. So. Fantastic. And, and how responsible was Roy or how responsible were you in, you know, in prompting the move for Roy Krishna? And what was that relationship like, you know, right from the time uh, you guys were in the A-League till you decided to come to the City of Joy? Yeah, well, I had really, like, personally, I had nothing to do with uh, Roy coming to um, ATK. But uh, um, there were a few little hints here and there. Um, but, the, you know, the club also respects every player's, um, you know, movements as well. So if they were to say things here and there, I mean, that gives players um, a different feeling. And, um, you know, the club yeah. has done very well in their recruitment. Um so, yeah, I, I didn't have too much to do with it at all. Um, but, yeah, just the knowledge of are we both going, I yeah, had a some mind that it could be a possibility. But um, I think when players are uh, talking about contracts and making decisions, they, um, they keep their cards close to their chest in that um, sense. So we are very close. But, yeah, there's some things that, um, yeah, don't get talked about. Fair enough, but, but I'm, I'm sure you guys exchanged notes when you when you got to you know eventually got to Kolkata and you know you had your first training. I remember you know this was just before the first couple of training sessions that we that we'd met for the first time, and uh, uh, you know knowing Antonio Havas and and his, and his ways in seasons one and two, which is you know 2014, 2015, we know that you know he, he really likes to go in training sessions. How did the relationship begin uh, with Antonio Lopez Havas, and uh, you know what was it like by the time you guys were lifting that trophy? Um, let's say it, it started the way it finished off, um, but yeah, there was some ups and downs in the um, few rocky roads and winding roads throughout the season. But um, you know, we have to test each other as well um, as a team. If everyone's um, complacent with everything, then you know, I don't think that's um, really uh, a successful way of of doing things. Everyone has to be put out of their comfort, zone and sometimes you might not like that. Um, but it's not just football, it's a, a lot of careers and a, a lot of um, different situations where to get the best self, you can't just be complacent and just take it easy. Um, yeah. So he knows how to win. Um, he knows how to win titles. Um, he's a very successful coach and he knows the Indian League. So um, you have to listen to him. Um, you have to, you know, do your best. You work hard and, and um, try and keep your starting spot if he gives, it, if, if he gives you one. And since we're talking about the uh, the idea from Eshik Mahali, who said, uh, "How do you compare?" And, I, and I'd like to get your views on the coaching as well. How do you how do you compare? You know, something like the A League. You you played in Hungary as well. You know, uh, and then you know, how do the leagues compare? And how does the how's the coaching and the standard different in, in these league in these leagues, uh, David? Yeah, for me, the A League is you know one of the most professional leagues I've seen. I mean the the facilities for a lot of clubs are very good. Um, the pitches and training pitches are all quite good. Um, but just the, the standard of um, sports science and things like that, what is available to um, uh, to the clubs in, in Australia is quite high. But with ATK, I know that we have a lot more than other clubs. Um, the owner doesn't really spare an expense in terms of giving the club and the coach and the players what they need to be successful and that's shown as well. So, um, you know, we're always looked after with physio as well and um, we, we do have a good training pitch um, just outside the stadium there and, you know, sometimes there's a lot of traffic on there because um, last season Mahamagam were also training on there and sometimes the reserves were on there and East Bengal. So, it's, um, you know, we need our own spot, but, you know, I think if we have our own spot, then we're further outside of the city. Um, so we have been given good facilities. We, we get looked after in travel, in hotels and whatnot. Um, you know, we probably stay in better hotels in India than we did in the A-League, for some of them, anyway. Um, so, you know, that's, that's nice every now and then. We're um, in a really nice hotel. But um, this, there are differences but you just have to, you know, the most important is football. It's not about what type of bus you're in or 
what room you're staying in or, you know, so much the food. It's it, it's how you, um, you know, put your mind into practice um, about training and then the game. And, you know, it's, it's, it's a mental game as well. Um, so in Hungary, it wasn't as professional. Um, you know, a lot of things came down to budget and money and sometimes salaries were late and, um, but I enjoyed my time in Hungary. I loved playing for that uh, club that was Haladash FC, and that was a you know a nice little town we lived in. Uh, good experience travelling through Europe, being based there as well. So um, you know, no regrets at all with um, the clubs that I played for. But um, ATK definitely a, a very professional club, and get given um, everything that we need. There was just a question about uh, your, you know, your favorite ATK moment, uh, which is something that I've been meaning to ask you about, uh, because that semi-final against BFC comes to mind. Against you know, you come into the second leg, uh, down a goal, then you concede early, and then eventually you know you you come up with one of the goals of the season in that header. Uh, what was what was the feeling like going into that game, David? Was there was there a lot of pressure before that uh, semi-final because you were at the Salt Lake in particular, and what was uh, the celebration like after you got the result? Yeah, no, there wasn't um, a lot of pressure. The coach kept us quite calm days before and, and whatnot. And we knew what we had to do. Um, we knew there was going to be a big crowd. And I feel like every player worked off the crowd, which was huge. And they were awesome. And I think that got us through in the end was uh, the excitement that we gave them. And I did say to the boys, um, you know, we you know, this crowd's going to help us when you feel down that, um, you know, the crowd's going to be our extra men and we've got to listen to them. And, and I just said, don't let this crowd go quiet. As soon as the crowd goes quiet, we'll probably be finished. So um, we kept entertaining them. We kept pushing them. Um, you know, Bengaluru are such a, a good defensive side, but we put three past them. So, yeah, for me, that moment um, of scoring the third goal was, um, yeah, one of the most exciting times in my football career I think um, I don't remember yeah. remember so much of it you know a week like past and two weeks but you know watching it on highlights every now and then um, you know I did um, start to remember things but the feeling is you know you just get goosebumps from the crowd roaring it's um, a great feeling but um, yeah after we didn't do much too much celebrating I mean there were players doing interviews and whatnot and um, some go in quite quickly and then they have the family around as well. And, you know, a lot of the family came down on the pitch and um, family and friends and whatnot. So um, everyone got back to the hotel as well. And um, we, we popped a bottle of champagne in the, the foyer. Uh, it was one of the ladies who looks after the club who works at the hotel. It was her birthday. So we, we joined in a few celebrations all together. And we just um, ate dinner in the in the restaurant as a, you know, the teams all around and not everyone sitting at the one table but you know you got your little groups here and there and then everyone um you know had a had a good night and i think everyone had a good night and then uh, we prepared for um the week after fantastic yeah i remember your celebration really well after that header went in and some header that was by the way uh but uh, Eric Partilu yeah. sent me uh, sent me a message saying please ask him about when that didgeridoo celebration is coming out <laughs> Uh, that's um, yeah, there was, there's, it's probably a bit more well, now. It's probably about third in line. There's a few, there's three celebrations um, before that that I want to do. So, um, you know, I, I, I did after the penalty. I, I did a funny face for my, um, for my son. He he loved that. So um, now yeah. I have to think of a of a few more for him because he wasn't there. And if I was to score, and then he'd watch the highlights and watch the goal, and then. He gets very proud as well, and um, yeah, that's special for me. Um, but yeah, there, there'll be a few more before the didgeridoo one comes out. So yeah, yeah, I, I'm going to get to the indigenous Australian bit as well because Andy cannot fail to mention <laughs> that every time he's on he's on commentary for a Hero ISL game. Uh, but just because we're talking about that goal in particular, David, and uh, you know the, the the quality of the finish as well, and to get past you know India's number one in goal for Bengaluru that time. I wanted to know uh, your thoughts on the fans' goal of the season, which is a vote that's carrying on on the Indian Super League website. So, I mean, all the fans who are tuned into this or watch it later also have a chance to put their vote. Your goal is actually up against, I think, Asamoah Jian's uh, goal against Goa. 
So it's going to be some battle there. But uh, if you were to pick your top three or four goals, what would that be um, in the entirety of the league? Uh, yeah. Okay. I think you know, there's different ways of um, saying how good they are. are. They individual or are they team goals and whatnot. But I kind of um, just kind of got individual ones more, a bit spectacular. Um, my first first one I said it was uh, was actually Royce versus Odisha to make it two 0 He um, he got a long yeah. ball from Mundy on the left side, and he's um, you know ran down and he's quite quick, just burnt the defender around the outside, and then um, just looped it over the goalkeeper. And for me, I mean, to do that at pace and composure, um, that's you know for me such a great finish. So I had to add Roy in there. Um, there's no room for Eric in that list, but um, <laughs> um, that's Thapa's fine. Goal, Thapa's goal versus uh, Goa in the first semi. Um, his, se- yeah. uh, his second, uh, was it sec- yeah, to make it 2 0. He um, scored from outside the box, curled at top corner, and that's such great technique and um, another spectacular goal. Um, and then yeah. Chavez, uh, Martin Chavez from. Um, was it northeast? He scored against North Chennai. Um, yeah. he, he scored a volley um, from outside the box. I think it was just first time right foot, and that was pretty spectacular. Um, and yeah. for some reason, if I'm, um, I remembered that goal wasn't the goal of the game or wasn't goal of um, the round. I think Lucian Goyen got the goal where that goal Chavez should have won, but it comes down to a popularity vote how um how many fans each club has i think in terms like that so yeah. for me he's um he's in my top 3 so goyan's goal uh, at the mumbai football arena i think that took chennai into the playoffs against and at the at the expense of mumbai i think that's the one you're you're talking about yeah it was a good goal i mean, I mean there was plenty of other better goals i think in the moment it was a special goal but um you know, yeah. it wasn't. Uh, I think, I think a lot of people probably could have um, put that in the back of the net. But you know, credit to, you know, them all, and he scored a few important goals for them as well. Yeah. Well, you, you, you speak of Goyan, and we've got to speak about the final. Now, this is a Chennai side that had a you know dream run to the to the final. Uh, they had beaten ATK at the Salt Lake three one, if I remember correctly. So, you know, you were up against it despite that fine result against Bengaluru in the, in the second leg of the semi-final. Uh, when you went to Goa in a closed-door event to play that final, uh, what was the chat like with Habas and the rest of the players and the staff, you know, about the preparation and how it was going to be different from, you know, the game you lost against them in, uh, in Kolkata? Yeah, well, also, you go into games uh, the feeling of last game and Chennai start against Goa. So even though they yeah. made the final, they still lost the second semi-final. So that you know sticks you know in their heads as well. Um, but we won our second semi, and we had a great feeling. So I, I think automatically our feeling um, was probably a better one going into the final. Um, they had a different road to the final, so maybe all that yeah. hype had just you know um, squeezed out uh, a week too early um, but they were coached very well um, they played very good football and they were exciting I think they were very similar to the way we played um, and you yeah. know they offered entertainment and I think the two sides that were in the final definitely deserved to be there um, but you know it was it was a bit nerve wracking I think for some of us at the start in the first 10 minutes they, they had a few very good chances, but couldn't convert. But, um, you know, if you can't convert them, then, you know, sometimes that just comes to haunt you. And we, we got that um, goal up the other end. Uh, I can't remember what minute it was. But, um, you know, from there, that gave us a lot of confidence. And it was quite an yeah. interesting feeling playing in an empty stadium. Um, but also, again, I said to the players that doesn't matter what um, they're feeling or what we're feeling. It's, it's you know, we're on... You know, level. There's no, um, you know, there's no difference of who's better at the time. It's um, it's more the fact that history is still going to be the same. We just have to be one level above them to to win the final. And um, you know, we'll still get a medal. We'll still get that trophy, and history will be the same. Um, 
So I, I think the boys had a very, very good mentality the whole game. Um, we did put ourselves under a bit of pressure, not clearing lines later in the in the game, but um, to still get that third goal and put more pressure. I think the subs that came on also that game um, did a fantastic job and you need, you know, all, uh, what, 14 players that, you know, that join in the game. So, um, you know, it was a yep. it was a good experience. Um, I would just love to play in front of a, a big crowd next time. Uh, who who led the celebrations uh, over there? I'm I, I'm sure there was some wild celebration despite you know all the all the all the lockdown proceedings that were in place that time. Well, to be honest, and a lot of people wouldn't believe it, is there weren't much celebrations at all because we were on a flight a few hours later at two a.m. Um, back to Kolkata. So we went to Kolkata via uh, Bangalore. So, uh, well, Bangalore, sorry. Um, so we went back to the hotel, had a few pizzas and had a few drinks. But, um, you yeah, know, those celebrations get led by um, our, um, yeah, big defend uh, big goalkeeper at the back, Ari. He, um, <laughs> yeah, he, he likes to um, enjoy himself when, um, when the time is right, and the time was right then, so we all had a, a drink together, and um, but then we were on the bus back to the airport. Yeah. Um, Forty-five minutes later, so we were all tired, all sleepy, had to sleep in um, the next day, and then um, we had our uh, celebration with the the owner at his um, office. So that was just a yeah. quite a calm um, celebration, and then straight away everyone kind of um, went off and and headed back home. So it was a dampener. This whole situ COVID situation has put a dampener on, on the celebrations. But, um, you know, yeah. when, the, when, you know, the, the club has a chance to, to celebrate, I, I think they will. Look how the mighty have fallen. Now you're doing household chores. You barely had a time to celebrate your first big trophy. And Roy Krishna's in the kitchen as well and doing all kinds of household chores where, where he is in PG. <laughs> I've seen that. Yeah, he was in isolation for more than 14 days. So... Um, yeah. You know, I, I'd, I'd question some of them. Maybe they were just staged um, videos, or um, just to sit and say he was cooking. But he probably went to the couch straight after that. So we'll see. <laughs> Eric Padlu just messaging horrible Barnett. I, I, I'm guessing he's taking a dig at me. He wouldn't. Be, he wouldn't ever do that to you, would he? <laughs> well, Eric's jealous. Um, he, yeah. he wants my curls. He wants the locks. But he's, <laughs> he's got the straight hair. So yeah. he, um, you know, he he's constantly taking it down, putting it back up in game. So I think he's losing a little bit of concentration and uh, with his hair. <laughs> I just keep mine up for the the whole game. So I don't know what he's talking about. Ah, oh, great, great banter. That's all. It's always good to good to hear from both you guys. And and you know, you're sitting so far away. But you know what? We can speed up things here a little bit. We I I wanted to go through like a rapid fire round with you just to see how you know what what your memories are of the season. So you're allowed to answer in one word or one sentence and the round is called One Touch. Not football, but Let's Football because we're on Let's Football Live. So you ready for it? So one sentence or one word, you say? One word or one sentence is fine. Yeah. Okay. 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 And we try and make it as quick as possible just so, just so okay. there's a, there's a semblance of... But, yeah. No worries. Okay. So this is also allow me to take a lot more questions from the guys who, you know, who, who sent in their questions early doors. So the first one is from Kyle D'Souza and he says, favorite Indian player? Uh, probably Adas. All right. Okay. Second one, uh, it came from two people, Advin 2005 and Ajit Regunath and said, describe your relationship with Roy Krishna in one word or sentence, whatever you want. Um, brother from another mother. Fantastic. Okay. Kyle D'Souza has another question. Favorite Indian food? You can choose a Bengali dish if you want. Oh, no. Yeah, butter chicken is my favorite. Oh, is it butter chicken? <laughs> with a naan. Yep. All right. Once that's the healthiest option in the world, but you know, you know better. Uh, ATK, week, and... <laughs> ATK and Sagnik asks, Edu Garcia or Javi Hernandez? Edu Hernandez. <laughs> Look, Javi Hernandez has been uh, with us on this Instagram live, so uh, I, I thought you might have picked him. But all right, fair answer. It's Tejas says comparison between ISL and A League in a sentence, if you want. Uh, com comparison. Um, yeah. Both are hot. <laughs> yeah, they are. 
Uh, Dilish says, who's the toughest defender you face in the ISL? Um, let's say Eric Pardalou. The toughest defender? Well, he's a defensive midfielder, so he is a defender. Yeah. He's the wind. I can't That's okay. We... Against him. He's too strong. <laughs> too big. And ugly. So I stay away. Yeah, there's somebody, Sahil the Destroyer, just asking, Patalu or uh, Roy Krishna, who would you choose? So let's pick that as well in our rapid fire, shall we? Oh, you can't give me that. That's it's like choosing my <laughs> wife or kids. I can't choose. So, so oh, all right, okay. But that, see, that's the whole point of the rapid fire, right? To put you in a uh, spot. Oh, I'm, I'll go, Roy. <laughs> <laughs> Eric, you can hang up now. Um, then football. <laughs> Uh, Wick8651 uh, asks, what is your opinion about Kerala Blasters? You played your first ever game in the Hero ISL in Kochu. So you can possibly tell us uh, uh, you know, a bit about it as well when you answer that question. Your opinion about KBFC and fire? Manyapada. This it is a rapid fire, but one word, one word for Kerala, one word for Manyapada. Or one... Um, amazing atmosphere. Sorry, I missed a bit about Kerala Blasters. Oh. Sorry, yeah, amazing atmosphere. All right, perfect. Then uh, Ayan Shams26 asked the most remarkable thing that took place this season for you. Uh, making the final, I think. All right. Navneet asks, toughest team to play against? Uh, Goa. Goa, okay. Uh, and speaking of Goa, actually, since we come to this uh, end of your rapid fire, no, actually, I had two more before that. Um, who's your idol, your footballing idol? Ronaldo from Brazil. Ronaldo Lima. The Ronaldo. The phenomenon. Yes, the, the original. The original. Okay, and uh, Sajad... Sajad asks, who's your favorite team in the Champions League? So he's given you sort of a wide variety to choose from, not just the Premier League. Uh, I think I'd have to say Liverpool. I'm not a, I don't follow them, but I think they're just exciting to watch. They put out good games and very entertaining. So I'd say Liverpool. All right, fantastic. There's somebody who, who mentioned, uh, by the way, that, that brings us to the end of the One Touch Let's Football round, which is not bad at all, David. So, so well done to you. Although I asked you some terrible Thanks. questions along the way, but the whole idea is to put you in a bit of a spot. Now, here's some, here's some trivia that I, that I wanted you to answer. So now this is, this is, how much does David know Williams? Okay, this is just my, my version of, my version of, uh, of how much you know yourself around. And the yes. first question is, uh, your goal in ATK's 1-0 win over Chennai and FC marked a significant landmark in the Hero ISL. That was the thousandth goal. We all know that. Who scored the next goal for ATK after that thousand goal went in from, from you? See, that means it Hindu or foreign? The first came to mind was um, Jay Ashrani. But no, I think it was. I, I think you're wrong. I'll give you another goal. Oh, I don't know. Um, Roy Krishna. It was a penalty against Jamshedpur. Do you know what? The odds were with him. I should have just said him anyway. <laughs> yeah, I was surprised you didn't take his name in the first instance. Now, the second question in, a, in how much does David know Williams is you became the fourth scorer in the Hero ISL. Name the other three. Say again? What was the question? You, you became the fourth Australian to score in the Hero ISL. Who were the other three? And if, you, if the viewers know the answer, uh, you can help David out a little bit as well. Well, Eric, of course. Yeah. Um, are there Aussies? Did Cameron Watson score? Is Cameron Watson? No. Sean Rooney? Sean Rooney there? You're going, you're going too far back. I, I can name oh, He's an Australian that... legend. So, so there's, there's one there. Oh, Tim, Timmy. Tim Cahill. So, Bridget, Sar Bridget Sarkar has said Cahill and Patalu. Now, you've got to guess oh, one more because there's one more Aussie who scored and that goes all the way back to the season 2014. Season 2014. So, was that the first or second season? 
the first season. Was he a defender? No, he wasn't a defender. Oh, he was very much playing know. forward. All right, he was playing for FC Goa. How about that? Then, uh... Tolge Osbe. Tolge Osbe is the is the right answer. Oh, Tolge Osbe oh, is Martin. is the first Martin. Aussie. Martin's connected. Was that come again? Sorry, can you go back to the answer? I said the the answer is Tolge Osbe. He scored for uh, he scored for FC Goa in in twenty fourteen. I would. That's the third that. Aussie. I'd yeah, be... so that's the whole. <laughs> All right. Okay. Well, uh, then oh, very hard trivia. Thanks. It it is hard. Uh, that that's the point. We're going to make it harder as time goes along. How many sides scored more goals than ATK this season? And give me the number if you can. It was only Goa. And they scored thirty-seven. I'll give you that it's go up, but there was actually fifty-one. So, uh, so yeah, they, they, they scored. They scored plenty. Was it fifty-one goals this season? They scored fifty-one goals in the entirety of the season. Yeah, the staggering. Well, good. Yeah. Well done, Goa. Good on them. What did ATK <laughs> get? How did we? How many? ATK, ATK. I think I had about forty-two. If I'm, if I'm right, maybe. Yeah, I'm getting something yeah. confused. Okay. No worries. So, speaking of ATK, which is the only side that had a fewer possession percentage than ATK this season? I told you it'll get harder. Oh. AT, ATK had forty-seven possession in the season. Which team had lower than that? Lower. Northeast. That's right. Bang on. Well done. Forty-six percent. Northeast is the right answer. Okay. Uh, ATK right. achieved their Ooh. ATK achieved their highest tally of points in a single Hero ISL season, which is twenty nineteen twenty. How many did they manage to collect? How many points? Um, the ATK. David, are you with me? Yeah. How many points did ATK get? Yeah, I'm with you. I was just pausing, thinking. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, maybe that's what I thought. Was it 37? Close. 34. 34. One game off. 30. No, that's what I was thinking. 34. I think I was thinking of points, not um, not goals before anyway. That's well, all right. I think you counted the, the second leg of the semi-final as three points as well. Ah, uh, we don't do that? No. You just okay. you just score three goals and you win. <laughs> Come on, you knew that. Uh, how many how many sides did you score against in the in in the Hero ISL? Oh, only not all of them. I think only maybe five. Close. You scored four. If you name them, I'll, I'll you you get to redeem yourself. Oh, I. Chennai, um, Bengaluru, Hyderabad, and Northeast. Bang on! Well done, sir. Eventually, you you got there. Not a bad round. I, I think I, I'll give you about three three right in that one. So uh, it's not a bad effort at all. Right. Uh, so Thanks, that's our that's our two rounds, and you also picked your uh, you know the goal of the season contenders. Including the one uh, from Goyan, which took us to the final. But of course, you guys won the final, and now that allows you, David, to you know to go for glory in Asia because you know the AFC Cup will be will be upon you. Makes me ask two questions: one, what's the next season looking like from uh, for ATK, and two, how big is it to you know compete in Asia for for a side like ATK? There's uh, with the merger of ATK and Mohammedan, I think it's quite good for Indian football, especially football in Kolkata. Um, yeah. Two, um, two successful clubs joining. Um, I think Mohammedan obviously um, have a lot of history and, and a lot of fans who 
hopefully will come across to to ATK and support everyone. I still hope the um, I still hope ATK keep some parts of Mahambagan in the in the the new franchise. Well, not franchise in in the new club. Um, you know, if that be even some um, squad players or players who are in the team, and you know, so that also gives the Mahambagan fans, um, you know, the the chance to support them as well because they have been from the past. I think that would yeah. be quite important. Um, and you know, a pathway for those players to not just um, have contracts that are finished, that also, well, you know, maybe there's trials or something like that. But I think there has to be some still connection from the current players um, if, you know, one, two, three or four are good enough to be in the, the squad of um, the new team. Um, I think it's just going to go up, um, you know, the, the people in charge love football and are passionate about football and they don't want to do anything to, um, you know, put it in the ground. So um, I, I, there, is been, there has been a lot of negativity about it. Um, you know, a lot of our other players, you know, get messages and, and comments and whatnot on Instagram and Facebook about the situation. But, um, you know, there's a lot of negativity in the ready, uh, I think. You know, if people are positive about different things, just wait and see how it is and then make your opinion um, once it's set up. I, um, you know, it's it's hard for me to, to say what's going to happen, but, um, you know, I'm, I'm looking forward to, um, you know, the club getting bigger and being bigger and more successful. Um, they've, you know, given me a great opportunity to play for this club for the last season. So um, if that's the case again next season, then... You know, we've, um, you know, the club's just got more records to break and um, more championships to win. Certainly, and there's no uh, ISL team that's ever been able to retain their title. So maybe that could be uh, high on the agenda as well from uh, from a successful side like uh, ATK. But Sunil Deary had a question. And since since somebody called Durante is there in India, I believe he's a former teammate of yours or somebody who knows you well. Um, oh, uh, sorry, Sunil Deary had a question. Uh, Sorry. Who did you say? Durante said you're the greatest player in India. I'm not sure if you know him. But... Yeah, what, a, what a guy. One of the oh, Durant, sorry. My bad. Okay, I'll just leave that to my... The question, how do you think foreign players can help Indian football? And you spoke about the kind of role that you've been playing in trying to put fans at ease about the merger. Um, well, the foreign players obviously add a different aspect to football. Um, foreign players generally grow up with, a, you know, playing football a lot younger than what the Indian players do. They start later. So they, um, you know, have a more passion for football early on and, and the technique is there because they're playing when they're younger. But also in, in foreign countries outside India, there's space to play, there's fields, there's clubs. It's very, very difficult for there to be a, yeah. you know, a grasp in India because there's not very much um, you know, space in terms of uh, you know, grass to play, play football on. So I understand it's very difficult for them and they learn later and that's probably the problem. Um, they don't have a problem with working hard and as long as they can function, then... Um, you know, working hard for the players that they, um, you know, then the foreign players can then also give advice to those working hard players on the pitch and on training where the coach can't give them. And, and I think that's where the foreign players kind of step up. Um, and they, all the foreign players I've come across are, you know, quite, quite good guys. And um, everyone's here for different reasons. But um, if I can improve someone or give someone a little bit of advice to, um, to get better, um, then, um, I, you know, for me, that feels good. But also an option to, to take it on board. Um, I don't know everything and I haven't been so successful. Um, but I've played with some very big players and, and been around um, some, some famous players and seen how they do things as well. So um, I've just taken little bits from my career here and there and, um, you know, try and offer some of that to um, some of the local boys. You're very humble in saying that, David, but, uh, you know, you've been a trailblazer, you know, in, in your own right. Uh, but 
because we mentioned the fact that Andy Pascalides has called you the indigenous Australian, fires ATK into the lead or gets them into 2 0. So, you know, he actually had a question about, uh, about indigenous footballers reaching the elite level. Why don't we see so many, like we do, say, in the rugby league or the uh, Aussie rules uh, uh, football back in, you know, back down under, or even in the rugby union for that matter? And how can you inspire some of them to, you know, take up the sport more, more actively if you haven't done that already? Yeah, well, not that there's an exact stat, but the amount of um, Indigenous players that have been through the A-League and have played professional yeah. football have represented Australia at some level, whether it have been under-17s, under-20s, 23s, or the Socceroos as well. Um, and also there's a, a quite a few um, women in the Matildas and the young Matildas. So um, if they make it professionally, they, they will generally go on to represent Australia. So I'm passionate about trying to find these kids who, um, you know, have talent, but um, they don't know that they have the talent yet. But they also follow their idols of rugby league and um, AFL and these different sports. And, um, you know, they want to do what their friends are doing rather than doing what they're good at. You know, they follow a crowd. So all I would just you know, advice to other people, not just those Indigenous kids, but, you know, kids in India as well is, and uh, you know, you've got to do what's best for you. You can't follow the older guys just because they're doing what they're doing. You need to be talented at, it could be an artist type of um, talent or, you know, it might be sporting, uh, might be uh, musical, but, you know, you've got to follow um, what you're good at. And, and if you don't, if you find you're not good at one thing, go and try another thing. I think, being in lockdown um, as well gives people a lot of time to find a new hobby and they might be good at um, something that they might not have tried. So I would just suggest try as much um, as you can. Pick up an instrument and try and see sort of natural talent for something or, you know, try a different sport as well if um, that's not going your way. But that's that's what I want to do when I finish playing football is um, try and get um, as many Indigenous kids um, into programs that um, that they can find a pathway to playing uh, professional yeah. football. Finally, we'll end with Anindu's uh, question, which is, you know, any message for ATK fans, uh, uh, you know, in particular, now that the merger is happening and I'm sure that ATK and Mohan Bagan fans are going to get together for this. Uh, somebody's welcomed you to Mohan Bagan as well. Somadeep 634 has just, uh, you know, sent his message across. So your message to the, to the fans who showed you so much love and, you know, given the fact that so many of your, I think five out of your seven goals were at the Salt Lake. Yeah, it feels good. I like scoring there. It's a, it's a good pitch. It's a good stadium. Um, with that atmosphere that we had in the semi, um, I can only imagine what it would be like next season if we're having both sets of fans in the stadium. Um, if yeah. that happens, I feel like that's going to be an absolute fortress. Um, teams won't want to come to Kolkata. Um, so, you know, my message is to um, just think about what do you love? Do you love football? Um, football's the real winner. That's sometimes what you've got to think about. Kolkata is such a passionate um, city about um, their sport, but especially about football. Um, so I, I would just say that next season, let's, let's go again and, and, and try and win the season. Um, try and finish on top by more points. I feel like we could have won the, um, uh, you know, finished on top and won the season um, with a few rounds to go. But there was there was a few games that we just um, had a few hiccups, and um, we know we we could have won them. And there was a couple of draws that um, we should have won as well. But people argue against me. There was a lot of um, wins that we probably shouldn't have won. Um, but you know, we had a good defence, and I. Yeah, I just want the, the fans to um, to support support the clubs, support the um, the owners, and and it wasn't all, all just um, ATK buying out Mahan Bagan um, because there's more money involved or whatnot. I, you know, it, the previous owner still has a stake in the club, and he he knows what's um, good for football as well. And there's a good relationship there, and I think um, the best thing to do is be positive and and not hope for the best because you can create um, you know the future in a way that you can give all the support you can. If there's support there, then the players can give um, more on the pitch. If there's a, a higher crowd, that gives every chance for the, the team to um, to give more. So um, we saw it yeah, in the second semi, but also 
throughout the season. We had some good crowds in and around Christmas time as well. We had some great crowds, and and maybe that was twenty five thousand or or whatnot or thirty, but um, still the noise is great. Um, I just wish India had um, some purpose built football stadiums. That would be um, unbelievable. And just before I let you go, I've got to I've, I've got to ask you something that I've been asking my experts of late, which is, uh, you know, to, to to pick a to pick you know five a side team if you can. Just before we let you go, David, an ISL five a side team. I'm sure you've given it some thought. Yeah, ISL. Okay, I. Is there a rule about ATK players being in there, or just my top five? No, just your 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 top five. There's no problem. Okay, for me. Somebody just asked um, you to say I Amar Buke ATK once. I I have to go Arunam in the in goal. He he saved us so many games this season, and Gupreet is a very 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 good goalkeeper. But he had a very good defence in front of him, um, and he wasn't tested as much as other goalkeepers. But Ari held his ground. He he, you know, was such a massive defence. Um, for us, and yeah, we scored, um, you know, a, a, most of the time more goals than than the than we let in. But he was the reason for yeah. that. There was many times he um, he got us out of trouble. So I have to say him. Um, and then I would go with uh, Agus, our big um, left central defender. He was um, a rock the whole time and so much experience. Um, yeah, yeah. I, I, would put him uh, Hugo Bumu from Goa. He, um, you know, set the league alight this this year. Um, did really yeah. well, um, you know, and as 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 well, he's scoring and assisting. So that's very important in the five aside. Um, I go yep. Abeche and uh, and Roy. Those two beasted. Yeah, I mean, we might concede a few, but we'll be scoring definitely a lot more <laughs> than um, the other team. I think so. Uh, entertaining game if we're going with something else. So. Fantastic. If you were to just pick an Indian five, I was just wondering since you mentioned Arindam over there, would you have an Indian five for us as well? That's not a bad team, by the way. Yeah, it could go well. Could go well. Um, well, obviously, I'd have good good breed in there. I'd have um, Tapa. I'd have. I'd have probably Nishi yep. just for you know and. Maybe Roland Borges from Mumbai. Indian five. Not a bad uh, ISL five that he picked, by the way. Yeah, sorry, David. We just lost you for the, there for a second. So you've got Thapa, no, you've got right, Nishu, yeah. and you've got Chetri. Yeah, and uh, Roland Borges from Mumbai. Roland Borges from Mumbai. And in goal, did you say you have Arindam again? No, uh, no, Ari was in my other five, so I'll go with Gupreet. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Fair enough. Well, David, it's been, a, it's been a real pleasure, you know, having you with us. And from all the banter from Eric Patalu, Andy Pascalides, and your family also was watching on from uh, Sydney, your wife chiming in, uh, to your relationship yeah, with Roy Krishna. <laughs> I saw my sister-in-law's um, throwing cheeky comments in there as well. And to everyone, but um, especially hello to fans and everyone in India as well. Thank you um, for having me, Anne. Yeah, look forward to the uh, future. Could be, could be very interesting. Certainly will. Uh, and we hope to see you back in, uh, in, in, in Indian football and the Hero ISL, David. Until then, uh, we, we'll keep in touch. And you stay safe and you stay at home. Bye-bye. Thanks, mate. Appreciate your time. Likewise. Cheers. Bye. Right, guys, thanks for tuning in to uh, this episode of uh, Let's Football Live. David Williams, all the way from Australia. And what a pivotal figure he was as ATK went on to lift the trophy for the third time in uh, six seasons of uh, the ISL. We'll be back with uh, another expert shortly. But thank you so much to all the ATK fans and the Kerala fans as well, who are never too far away. Uh, and I'm sure we'll, be, you know, we'll, we'll give you the name of the next guest very shortly. But until then, uh, from Let's Football Live's team, it's goodbye.